Hey, 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 everybody. It's that time. It's that time. It's final split time. We're doing a late show tonight, but one that uh, I think we're all looking forward to. We've got uh, Mystery Tournament 6 minutes away from kicking off, and we're bringing you the first game uh, of the tournament. But before we get to that, we might as well introduce everybody that's here. So uh, returning, as always, we've got Darkman in the green box. Welcome back. Greetings, greetings. Right, how excited are you for this uh, this mystery tournament to start here? I'm very excited. It was kind of weird at first. I kind of didn't really want to play, but I really wanted to submit games, which is weird because usually it's the opposite for me. Okay. So, but now I feel pretty excited now that we're here. I'm ready to go. Should be fun. Should be fun. Yeah, I love submitting games. That's my favorite part. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's the only part I do well. Anyway, we've got <laughs> in. In the red box, we've got Spike Vegeta, who is uh, also, I think, pretty pumped, aren't you? Oh, yeah, no. This is, again, kind of goes, uh, as, as much as I like to consider myself a speedrunner, I am more than anything else a lover of the viewer of speedrunning. Um, I love seeing people uh, put their skills to the test, and I think this is a very fascinating way to do it, and I'm glad these mystery tournaments have been so successful over the years. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to all these matches. I hope to catch a lot more than just this one in the future. Yeah, uh, just the just the start of the uh, tournament here, and uh, the organizers and uh, guests this week. We've got Boney and Blecky. Now, I, I don't care which order you guys go in here, but uh, you guys are obviously pretty excited to see this tournament get kicked off, aren't you? Eh, no, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's, nah, it's just another tournament. You, you know, you've been there and done that. <laughs> Uh, do you do you have anything to say as far as uh, what you think makes this tournament different from ones in the past? Uh, it's all about the new faces, really. Uh, every single time, it's really, really exciting to see. Because, I, I mean, I love blind racing. That's obvious by now. And I feel like I've built up this roster in my head of who are the really good ones and, and like, the top tier and stuff. And, yeah, every single tournament, we see these new faces that um, we've never seen before and yet do so well. I mean, MT4, when Cap and Drake showed up, nobody knew who that was. And then he won that tournament. So there's every single time there's someone like that. I think Full of Lizards last time uh, was, first showed up in MT5. He was a really um, great blinder. Andy, I think, showed up last time. So who knows what we'll see this time around. And we'll get into the bracket a little bit later, too. Boney, did you have any uh, I just want to point out that the race just started. <laughs> the race just started? Whoa. <laughs> well, I didn't realize they, they were uh, starting they already, got, so let's get over there. Easy, so. They, hey, the <laughs> they uh, want to get it going. Well, we switch just, over here. I'll, I'll I'll upload the streams here. They're, they're, uh, they're beating me to it. <laughs> Wasn't ready for that. But uh, why don't you uh, go ahead and reveal the game then while I'm loading them up here? So we have a uh, submission by Kroya, I believe is how you say his name, and it is Monodai. It's some freeware game. It's a platformer, and it looked pretty neat, so I'm excited for this one. I like the description. It's some platformer, and yeah. it's pretty neat. Hey, free platformers. How can you go wrong? All right. So Now, um, uh, you know, Twitch being Twitch, uh, <laughs> we've got the <laughs> wonderful buffering screens uh, at the moment. So in all likelihood, they're going to be done with this race by the time <laughs> uh, it's a buffering race. things load in it's... here. I'm just going to re refresh it, but you might have to tell them to just, like, Stop. <laughs> Stop don't do anything, guys. Uh, it's, it's, leave. it's working for me. I don't okay. Know well, you know, I'm running like 80 things. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there we go. It looks like okay. it's finally right. finally All loading right. in. We did it. All right. Uh, somebody's got to tell Just Defend that he's got MT6 starting soon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> on his dude, game it layout. started. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who cares? All this right. does not go so, uh, well. <laughs> I don't know too much about this game. Um, it was a shock. I, I didn't know what uh, was going to be picked, but it looks really cool so far. It looks um, to be, and, uh, and Darkman told me a bit about it as well, just from what he knew, is, is that uh, it's, it looks to be a puzzle platformer where I guess you just get kind of item by item. It's Maybe it's sort of like a linear Metroidvania almost. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I'm, I'm learning as we go. So. <laughs> but it looks like uh, Ness is, has a bit of a lead here. Having so, some trouble with this next screen. First, things that look like they can kill you potentially. Mm -hmm. So, 
I don't know. Would you guys say that the the jumping it looks a little floaty to me? So that that's always the biggest thing when we watch these blind races, or especially of games that we, the viewer, are not personally familiar with. Is we always go, oh, how could they mess that up? Right. And you wonder how much of it is just we don't understand what the physics of this game mm -hmm. is, what it is to control this, and that's always the exciting thing when you see runners first jump into these blind matches, how quickly they can pick that up and figure out, okay, I'm going to learn how to play, I think, more by the game's rules than my rules to start out, considering I do have a very small amount of time to actually figure out this game. Now, it, looks like the, Go ahead. it looks like the idea of the game is just, at least on this, the screens we've seen so far, is that every screen has these eggs, uh, and you have to shoot all the eggs to get through the door. But it looks like what makes it really unique is that it's not a platformer. Well, it is a platformer. It, it's not a platformer where you can shoot both ways. You can't turn in terms of aiming. So it looks like you can only shoot left, and you have to kind oh. of... Yeah, and it looks like you have to, you know, plan accordingly. Now, obviously, I, I was uh, wondering uh, why he wasn't exactly. just tur going and doing yeah. that because he was shot. Okay, now we know this. All right, we're learning. We're learning That's just like really they are. That's a strange gimmick. Yeah, interesting. It's neat, though. Mm -hmm. I like it. Now, uh, yeah, I was going to point out, too, obviously the frame rate issues are just a result of me trying to stream too much here, but uh, uh, hopefully you guys are also checking out their uh, streams and maybe getting to see, uh, you know, from their perspective, and maybe you'll get a better frame rate there as well. But uh, so talk to me just a little bit about the format. I mean, obviously, you know, we're pretty familiar with it, but in case people don't know what the mystery tournament is all about, do you want to just kind of give the brief overview? I can do that. Um, so, okay, there's a lot to talk about here, so hopefully if, uh, if I miss anything, Blucky can cover me. But what we do is just this giant double elimination tournament where players are basically just competing in one-on-one -on -one races to finish a, a usually pretty short goal, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of 30 minutes. And almost every match is in a game that they've never played before, so to some extent it's like a giant blind race tournament. And uh, to enter the tournament, Basically, the entry fee is to find a few games and goals and submit them. You can't play if you don't submit games and vice versa. So there's this giant game pool that builds up from all the entries. And uh, for each match, you know, you'll draw your own or you'll draw someone else's submission, but you can't play your own. And you're just doing a bunch of one-on-one -on -one matches in a format like that until you lose twice and are out or obviously until you win. Yeah, it's, it's March Madness, but you get that double elimination instead of single elimination. <laughs> so get two chances um, now tell guys... us a little bit how many people are entered into this tournament right now so we have 124 in this one uh, almost a, almost a perfect guys? number um i believe we had 151 in mt4 so we're still in that area hopefully mm -hmm. in the future we'll hit like 200 or something because that'd be <laughs> awesome but hell i mean you can't you can't not like 124 it's such a such a huge number oh. Like you say, only four off from literally where NCAA basketball needs to yeah. as well. So close to the dream, but hey, what can you do? Now, do you want to talk about maybe uh, the type of games people are allowed to submit? Because I know there's, of course, been a notable addition to what games people can submit this year. So maybe you want to talk about that as well. Yeah, so, uh, Blecky, do you remember the list of all the consoles we allow? Because I don't. <laughs> there are quite no, a few. I'll try and pull it up. Okay. So, Just uh, be general. We yeah we don't allow like newer consoles for the most part because they're really resource intensive but you can submit like freeware games and nes snes Game Boy, genesis a lot of older stuff like that um but as of this tournament for the first time we're allowing ps1 games and we have i think a couple of dozen of those in the pool so we're gonna see some crazy stuff come up i also just want to say real quick this game looks awesome mm -hmm, i agree this yeah, was, was a good game. first choice. Now, uh, let's be honest. Did you guys handpick this as one you wanted to showcase, or was this just a random draw that happened to be pretty cool looking? Because you can have some hits and some misses with the Mystery Tournament, obviously. Yeah. As far as I know, this was completely randomly drawn. Um, I, I basically told uh, the game testers we have, uh, Scent and Crystal Chaos, I just wanted to name them because they deserve shoutouts for all the work they do. Uh, I told them to randomize a game, and if it looked really bad and uninteresting, to just roll another one. Because, you know, we don't want to make viewers fall asleep to really weird games. But yeah, uh, I think this was completely random. Do you have someone who is, like, notorious for submitting bad games and you just auto-reject every time? Rat funk. <laughs> oh, yeah. But he's a... not in this tournament, so thankfully everyone's saved. 
It looks like Ness uh, reaching the first, I guess, boss of this game, or at least mini boss. Big pink looking TV type thing, I'll call him. <laughs> That's a looks key adorable. boss. You might want to refresh Golden. I think they are both on him. Yeah, it looks like they are on yeah. mine, but uh, I, I'm I'm scared to touch anything at this point. Yeah. Just okay. because <laughs> it's, it seems to be working alright. It's, right. it's, it's <laughs> barely working. You know, the frame rate's not that great, but at least we've got uh, yeah. gameplay, which you know. Who knows if that's going to be the case in a minute or two. So uh, hopefully this isn't the one and only boss. Hopefully it's a little longer. Because <laughs> um, you never, I mean, you just never know. Um, goals are supposed to be, like, are encouraged to be, like, at least 15 minutes is kind of the perfect minimum. Um, but we've seen some five-minuters in the past. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as the tournament in general goes, uh, Boney hit it all in the head. Um it's a really cool idea, and, and of course the attraction is that not only can you play in this speedrunning tournament, but you can also uh, submit games and watch people play these games that kind of you feel like maybe either only you know about and like, or uh, just like well, more well-known games that you still want to watch people play, and it can really be a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, and then uh, later on in the tournament, so we get all the way to the top ten, and then we do have one final stream once we're at the top ten, top eight, rather. Top eight. <laughs> um, yeah, top eight. And uh, and then we just kind of continue along on that day until we have our we crown our champion. And so you mentioned final stream, but now in addition to that, you guys are also going to be doing streams leading up to the final stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, so what what about those? Yep, yeah, so it's going to be uh, pretty similar to kind of what we're doing today. Uh, it's going to be a bit more focused on kind of commentating the race itself. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we thought it would be a pretty good idea to... Um, I mean, the final commentary streams themselves typically are well-received. And so we just feel like uh, the Mystery Tournament in general is so well-liked that people might want to see more content. So we just kind of want to give that a shot. Now, tell us a little bit about this match that we're in right now. Do you guys happen to know the goal, what they're trying to achieve, beat a couple bosses, or what are we trying to get to here? Uh, this is a full game goal. I I'm not quite sure how long this game is, but oh, wow. I, uh, Lightyear says there are three sections, so assuming that's accurate, they're about a third of the way through. So yeah, it should be 30 minutes at most, probably, so that's a good length. And it that's looks like, like just a... Go for it. Just Defend has been having some trouble on this boss. They got to him at roughly the same time, right. but uh, Ness just kind of blew right through him, and Just Defend is having a bit more difficulty. Can I tell us that. a little bit about these two race racers in terms of their mystery yeah. tournament histories? Are these both successful runners in the past? They have a little more trouble? What do we got here? What's our story? Uh, I think this is Ness's fourth tournament, and he's done very well in two of them. I believe he's got ninth in two of them, and the other one he, he had some issues, didn't get too far, but he's uh, pretty consistent overall. And this is uh, just Defend's first tournament, actually, so he's looking to pull off a bit of an upset here. Yeah, we'll get to, like, like Golden said, we'll get to kind of talking about the brackets in general in a bit more detail, but um, Just Defend is absolutely one of the runners where I'm just really excited to see how he does in the tournament overall, starting with tonight. Because, I mean, he's, a, he's proved himself a very capable Super Castlevania 4 runner. Um, and so it's just kind of when you, when you know that people are at the top of their game uh, in terms of a, par a particular game, then you just kind of want to see how they do in a more blind racing setting. And just see, to see how it translates. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because there are some people who are very skilled at a specific game, but then you put them in that blind setting, and it's a totally different experience to them. You know, not having that rehearsal can really throw somebody off, and it's just a totally different experience from, uh, you know, grinding out RTAs or studying one game for a long yeah. period of time. For sure. I well, always I, felt that, like, I, I know some people don't agree with me, but I always feel like blind games are a better judge of how good of a speedrunner you are because it's more about adaptability rather than just, you know, memorize a route, get, you know, your, you know, just keep practicing, practicing until you get it. I feel like this is a more like demonstration of your natural ability to speedrun, so to speak. So Completely that's why I always agree. find fascinating about blind games. Yeah. It's, I haven't, I guess I haven't fully decided how. Uh, it translates in turn to speed running for me because I think it does mean that you'll pick up a game quicker. Um, but I think like the best way to what it really means to me is just that it it mean it makes you more of an intuitive gamer. It speaks to your um, 
you know, intuitiveness and ability to pick up on what a game wants from you and how exactly the controls work in order to get across what you want to do in a game. Um, and I think that's what really kind of appeals to me a lot. Looks like, uh, I don't know when this mechanic is introduced in this game, but uh, on Ness's screen, you can kind of see we were talking a bit, about, a bit before about how per screen, it looks like your gun can only be held in one direction. But once you hit one of those kind of sparkly pods in the lower left, um, it turns your gun so that you, you, on a particular screen, you have to plan out what you want to do when your gun is facing one direction and then when you want to change the direction of your gun. Because I don't think you, you can change it back after that. So it's, it's you have to oh, go all the way through committed. in one direction okay. and then change it, yeah. yeah. That's what it seems like. It's, it's also really... interesting watching these blind the the mystery tournament races where it feels like almost some games are more fascinating from a speedrunning standpoint in a blind setting like mm -hmm. this one. Uh, obviously, it being a puzzle platformer, it's not just oh I, I've already solved all these in my head. I know what to do it. So you kind of get to almost solve them along with the racer at the same time. We're trying to figure out okay, so it looks like some of these eggs we've been uh, uh, you know we've been thrown this mechanic where some of the eggs are perhaps a little stronger than others, mm -hmm. and it looks like you need to be further away. And the further your shot comes from. Uh, to me, at least, it looks like the stronger it is. It kind of goes from a single shot yeah, yeah. to a double pellet to kind of a different colored pellet. So having to figure out distance as well to take out each of them is uh, very interesting in a blind setting, I think, yeah. here. This yeah, is definitely you one say? of the more interesting puzzle platformers I've seen. For sure. Um, and what you say about kind of, like, this one game, Fire and Ice, is my favorite, is one of my like top three uh, blind games ever. But one, if you try speedrunning that game, it just becomes kind of extremely stale because your move, your movement is very, very rigid, and it's just about as rigid of a puzzle puzzler as you can get. Um, so while it would be a very boring platform game, it's one of the best blind races out there. And so I, I can kind of see what you mean in terms of like the translation of being from going from a blind game to a or good blind game to a good speedrunning game. For sure. Now, what are, uh, in your opinion, uh, like, what are bad submissions to this tournament? Let's say I'm, I'm about to submit for the first time, you know, I, I, I see Mystery Tournament 6, I'm excited by it. Mystery Tournament 7 rolls around and I submit, you know, uh, Diablo. Uh, <laughs> you know, is, is that going to make me look like the worst submitter of all time? What, what's, a, what's a bad submission? Are you leading this a question one? a little bit? What do you no, think? That's... <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't use Bugs Bunny's Crazy Castle. Right? Oh, yeah. I could have... <laughs> Could have dug back for that one, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the angriest ones I remember. That you, uh, <laughs> I've, I've had a history of uh, games that yeah. just have not been been nice to me. But uh, no, yeah, I mean, Pony, if you want to do that, yeah. yeah, I mean, there are quite a few things, and I'm only gonna be able to think of a couple. But I'd say randomness when it's like a heavy factor like if you're playing i mean no one would ever even submit this but if you if someone submitted like monopoly or something i mean that's not gonna get through uh just terrible games in general i mean some games are just objectively bad and no one would defend them and people will submit them just because they want to be mean those won't get through stuff like that and it's kind of like it doesn't have to just be luck in terms of RNG, it can also be luck in terms of choices. So if you choose, like, if you say, like, a Metroidvania, um, there can kind of be, if you encounter a split path, one person might go up, one person might go down. And the person that went, goes, went up is going to just, like, automatically basically win right. if, if it's the right path or have a significant <laughs> advantage. So um, Metroidvanias are another one that's frowned upon, even though uh, it's a great genre of game, of course. Um, let's see. RPGs, certainly. I mean, there's tons of choices in RPGs, but they don't they really translate to blind racing well either. So those typically aren't encouraged. Um, let's see. What do you think is, like, uh, the most unusual submission you've allowed? I mean, obviously, platformers, puzzlers, those kind of seem to fit well mm -hmm. into the format, but is there a game that just kind of stands out as this doesn't match the <sighs> format really of... Any I really game? want to make sure I have a good answer for this question, so I might need a minute. I'm just going to say yes and not give examples, because I can't think of any good ones. 
I don't like know. He officially put more work into en- than, <laughs> than anybody is. Yeah. Doing. I was going to say Mamano Sweeper comes to mind, but that's, that's I guess one. that's kind of a puzzler, but it's just kind of obscure compared to what you would expect, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. That's hard to answer, really. I mean, it just it's so situational depending on the game. Well, you got me like... going through lists. So. <laughs> All right. Well, Blucky will answer you in a couple there you minutes. Go. So. I feel yeah, like for better like... or worse, you can't go wrong with like half the Japanese NES games that are out there Oops. because like nobody's played them, but they're yeah. all like really weird. <laughs> Samurai pizza cast genre. Yeah, I like it. Now it looks like possibly Just Defend had has had some issues. Yeah. yeah. I... We're actually not sure if he just got stuck and didn't know what to do, or if his controls messed up. We we have to, we just have to see. I think he was having some controller issues or something. It looked like so. Uh, it just seems he like he said he think he missed something. He can't quite figure it out. Um, so whatever it is, he he quit on purpose. Like he had, I think he had full control of his character and just oh, couldn't okay. figure out the puzzle. But I mean, it's starting over again. So ooh, that's unfortunate. I was like, I didn't catch if there was like a limited number of lives in this or not. Seems like the kind of one you'd be able to just try as much as you can, but yeah. at least does not denote it, at least from what we can tell. No. The only good thing is he can probably breeze right through in about a minute or two. So. Yeah, now that he's played it, he's a little familiar with it. I mm-hmm. mean, would you say that this is a common thing for this tournament that uh, somebody gets, you know, stuck or hung up on something or they have. Uh, you know, compatibility issues, things like that. I mean, is it is it a pretty frequent uh, thing to run into? It it happens. It's not frequent, but you know, every now and then a game will break. Usually, a freeware game will just break for whatever reason, such as this very game, maybe. So you know, something something happens in that regard. We'll we'll do our best to uh, compensate for it. But if someone's emulator crashes or something. It's just kind of facts tough luck. of life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's a little frustrating, especially from the person who submitted the game. Uh, I, I think to myself watching this tournament, again, we bring up the all the different sorts of audiences <clears throat> that a mystery tournament can, can bring in. And I know for me personally, I, I'm talking about right now about sending a copy of one of my speed games to a couple of my friends just because I want them to do a blind race of it on stream. <laughs> this excitement from that of seeing like, it, there's almost a part of you, I don't know if any of you guys ever feel this way, but do you ever want to go back to not knowing so much about your game, just wishing yeah. it could be back Absolutely. to that casual point? Oh, yeah. So now actually getting to see three or four of your good friends, or in this instance, two people you don't even know, just try their hand at it. Especially people who are, you know, accomplished gamers, uh, have, you know, uh, NES accomplished, especially in the, the mystery realm, just defend Super Castlevania 4. Watching them you know, try their hand at figuring out your game. Uh, I think it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So obviously Definitely. seeing them, you know, having some issues probably frustrates you on the same degree, but uh, yeah, just once again, mystery tournament really reaching out to a lot of different types of audiences and different types of entertainment you can get out of it. Yeah, I know a lot of like the first time entrants like to submit games that they run, if, especially if they're obscure, and obviously they they're really satisfied when they see their game being played. So that's definitely a really interesting thing to see. But yeah, so, definitely liking the build of this game, kind of how it, you know, as a puzzle platformer should, it introduces some very basic mechanics to you, and it seems like a relatively simple game, and we're already to a point where, you know, Ness, we're, again, we, we the audience, I'm sure, are trying to figure out these puzzles along with him, some mm-hmm. pretty interesting rooms that you're in right now. Yeah, yeah I mean, it looks like he's on uh, zone three of three, so he is starting that. Um, and unless puzzle, uh, some kind of puzzle kind of just gets him stuck, we'll see how quickly Just Defend can uh, catch up. But right. now, in, pu- in puzzle games, you certainly can easily get stuck and somebody uh, can come back. But go ahead, cool. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, too, uh, just another element of this uh, that maybe people aren't aware of is that uh, aside from just these two, uh, anybody can jump in on the races, the individual races of the tournament, correct? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So if I'm if I'm a stream viewer and I didn't get into Mystery Tournament 6, but it looks interesting to me uh, and I want to take part, I absolutely could do that right now. I mean, you obviously not all of them. Yeah. Obviously <laughs> yeah. not this yeah. race, but let's say, let's say, you know, uh, when the tournament starts up here uh, this weekend... Yeah, I'll link uh, the guide to joining SRL races in general. But really all it is is um, the way it works in terms of mystery tournament 
is uh, we have this IRC channel, this chat room, where everybody in the tournament uh, logs into. And once one, uh, once two competitors, because as Boney mentioned, everybody's paired up against their opponent. And once the two opponents are both on at the same time, they'll try to connect with each other. They'll try and you know speak to each other and make sure they're ready. And then they'll uh, basically say, "Okay, we need a game to play." And at that point, we start a race on speedruns live, like we d would for race. And those guys basically get started. And uh, they basically just do their race against each other, and then it's recorded separately on our bracket. So let me link our guide to just kind of joining races in general. Um, let me make sure, yeah. So, I mean, that's just for joining SRL races in general. So once you're able to connect to the IRC, I mean, um, either just hang out in the main Speedruns Live channel and look out for races that get made, or join Hash Mystery and uh, kind of watch out for... Um, you know, when people get their own game, get their mystery races set up. And you can really, like like Spike said, uh, I think Spike said, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can join uh, yeah. whatever you want. So um, you can join any, like, mystery race you want. So anyone can join any race that happens. And uh, so you're free to do so, yeah. Yeah, the exciting part is, and usually a lot of times in the beginning of the mystery tournament, you have a lot of people getting really excited for all these races. They try to join every single one they can. I know I've seen like some of the bigger races that have like you know ten or fifteen people, even more. So you know people get involved in this, even if they're not even playing in the tournament or not even it's not even their match to play. So. Right. Even if you're knocked out of the tournament, you can still play in every single round. Mm -hmm. You just you just don't get that glory that the uh, the winners <laughs> get. Yeah, I've noticed a lot of the people who do join the races just for fun uh, end up joining like the next tournament too. So that's that's always good to see. So it's a good opportunity for anybody that's watching right now and isn't in the bracket to uh, give it a test run anyway. Yeah, join that channel right now. Just hang out in there, and there will be races a lot. And there we, will be a lot of races this weekend. Did we so. mention the channel name? I don't know if I. Asked yeah, you what the channel uh, yes. name was. Okay. Mystery on SRL IRC. There Type you go. Hash mystery. Yeah, I mean, since um, 120 people, 125 people signed up. Uh, usually, it's usually for most rounds, it's three days per round. I think this first one will probably be about like five or six days to to mm -hmm. get your match in. So, over the next five days, there's going to be 60 plus matches that get played. Yikes. That is a lot of matches. <laughs> it's and exciting. I mean, yeah. And even uh, since it's the first weekend, I mean, as it progresses, if you get your matches done early and your opponent, your next opponent in round two or whatever is ready for you, you can get those done too. So, I mean, it's now, actually realistically going to be more than 60. Has it always been that way? Or I feel like yeah. it used to be sequential. Like you had to get through all of round one to play round two, or is, was that nope. never the case? No, okay. it's always been... Uh, you can you play can as soon as you're ready? It, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I now think we almost set a limit one time just so that we didn't get too ahead of ourselves, but I don't think we ever wound up doing that. Okay. Now, uh, another thing that I thought of that we haven't talked about yet is uh, the fantasy draft. Now, I know this has happened for a while. I actually found a, <laughs> I found an ancient paste bin, uh, which I have, I have to guess it came from like the first mystery tournament, and there's just like five of us that have teams of players. Uh, <laughs> So talk to me a little bit about uh, how you guys score that and how, you know, I mean, that's obviously a pretty big deal now. It seems like it's uh, pretty serious. I was watching the, the draft stream the other day. Yeah, since uh, MT4, a group of us every tournament have just decided, hey, we're just going to do like a snake draft where we just draft players in the tournament and see who does the best overall. Um, and yeah, I mean, if you're... We we have eight people per team usually, and we have like a reserve just in case someone drops and they need they need a replacement. Um, but if you if your guy scores a win in winners bracket, you get a point. If your guy scores a win in losers bracket, you get half a point. And we just sum them up, and winner at the end uh, wins the draft. And um, wow, we uh, <laughs> the 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 catch is basically whoever wins the draft has to make everyone else in the draft play any game of their choosing for a couple hours oh, Ooh, that with, is... with the exception I of second love place it. i love it that yeah. is brutal that's, second that's place worse than putting money on the line bad. i think yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i mean for those of you who don't know the people that regularly frequent blind can they know some devious games i guess we'll just leave it at that so <laughs> yeah they'll, you guys i'm sure have some uh, nasty ones for the losers yeah it's it's a scary thing <laughs> 
What did we have to really play fun. so far? Originally, I think it started in MT4. Pi won that one. He chose Superman 64, but didn't make anyone, didn't like follow up on it, I guess, or, or like release people from his <laughs> firm grip. So uh, we didn't oh, actually he, have to play those. He, he, and then I forgot. Oh, Boney, you won last one, right? Yeah. Well, we had two drafts last time because we had like 13 people or something who wanted to do it. So uh, I won the draft I was in and I made people play uh, Bounty Bob, which is a ZX Spectrum game. I'm just going to let that sink in and you guys can look at it, look at the rest. Cause, what yeah, in the world is the ZX something. Spectrum? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, I think Midboss won the other one and I don't remember the name of the game. He actually hasn't made them play it yet, but it's like a weird, really weird now, educational it, DOS game. Does it expire at some point? Like, Don't you think like, okay, Mystery <laughs> Tournament 6 has started, you missed uh, your window... Not for me. I'm, I'm still going to make everyone else play my game. So. <laughs> all right, all right. Now, we've, we've got an interesting uh, problem here because so Just Defend has been running into, uh, I think, a combination of control issues and then just getting stuck on some of the puzzles. But Ness has been stuck on this one puzzle for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. uh, seems yeah. to be uh, yeah. one egg I mean, away there. Th th this brings me to this question that I'm sure a lot of people ask. How common is a double forfeit? Uh, I don't think that's happened. <laughs> really? Okay. Wait, well, what? I imagine on some of these puzzle happened. games, well, you, would, you would run into that. It's happened because I've done it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> done it? we've had a couple of races. Oh, we've just... made sure it's happened. Yeah. <laughs> so we have like a cutoff time for races. And if the goal isn't completed by either player in like an hour and 45 minutes or a little less and they just agree they don't want to play it anymore, uh, then we'll just redraw and make them play a new game. So, I mean, it's happened in that sense. So but we have... We haven't had like two people just quit at the beginning and say, so okay, we, just, we both lose. Someone has to be, if someone, there, there's no like tiebreaker. They have, the winner has to finish the, the goal. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I, I don't want to like forecast this, but based on uh, all of the stream problems we've been having so far, and, <laughs> you know, it's all on my end or anything, but there's a part of me that's like, come on, man, we can get game number two and I can cut the stream and drop the frame rate and, you know. We can go. We can go twenty frames per second, and it'll be the smoothest experience you've ever had. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I mean, it, it looks like uh, Ness is not giving up anyway. He's he's trying to tackle this one, and uh, just defend. Yeah, moving around again. Yep. Uh, I like he apparently... finally at least. I, I haven't been watching Just Defend's stream as much. I don't know if he's. If the puzzle, I mean, yeah, these so, definitely seem like trigger puzzles, or if he's just having controller issues. No, yeah, well, the issue was that he had W split enabled, and so uh, that was uh -oh. that was preventing him from going up and down. Basically, he had his his hotkeys yeah. uh, yeah. overriding uh, his controls. Okay. Yeah, I was hoping that wouldn't happen on the stream match, but stuff like that <laughs> does happen sometimes, yeah. and it's I mean, it's just so unfortunate. But what can you do? One of the facts yeah. of life. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Ness is still having difficulties on right. the puzzles, as long so as and, and that's the thing, you know, uh, there's been many times in the mystery tournament where I've said to myself, there's no way I'm going to win this race. You know, I've been stuck on this stage for 15, right. 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and then I find out that I win by 10 minutes. You know, yeah. I, yeah. it doesn't happen often. I don't win that often, but the times that I do win, it always <laughs> seems to be like, wow, I can't believe I, you know, with that time, I actually won. But yeah, yeah. that's something to really remember in blind racing in general is that no matter how bad you think you're doing, the other person is probably just as frustrated. So <laughs> it's really easy to get to beat yourself up over um, thinking you're doing terribly. But you just have to remember that, like the other competitor, or whatever is, uh, you know, is completely new as well and probably stuck on the very same thing you are. Now oh, it's, it's it seems like the it's like you're saying, Bucky, to build off of that. It feels like you got this interesting dynamic where it's supposed to like if we're watching, you know, an AGDQ race and it's between, uh, you know, the two or three top SM64 runners, and all of a sudden one runner dies at the end of like a hundred coin star. It's like, well, okay, this race is over. And you're probably right. They're, the you know the runners are too consistent. They're probably not going to make those sorts of mistakes. The dynamic that's brought to the table here is that you never know when the other player is going to get walled. I've been yeah. in blind races with people before where I've had a lead, and then you just get stuck at a boss one level, and then you can't figure it out. So just because Just Defend is behind here, obviously having some control issues, does not mean he can't come back and win this. Uh, I gotta ask to at least the people in the call. Anyone just watching Ness's stream? Has anyone figured out how you're supposed to break this egg? 
Yes. Yeah, okay. I, I think. I so. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure. It's, I don't know I, how he has figured it out yet, to be honest. I mean, I was. It's, I think I see it, but it yeah. might, I might be one tile off. I'm not sure. No, I. I think it's one of those things where you just have tunnel vision. You know, like if you're the one yeah. in the race uh-huh. at this moment. Oh yeah. You. It's so easy to just fall into this routine of trying the same thing over and over again. And. Uh, I think oh, he did. He, did. he, did. he <laughs> got, got it. it. There we go. Rise, he finally figured it out. All right. Which one of you told him the answer? That's let's be honest. <laughs> That's the real question. <laughs> now he's trying to figure out how to not die. He's not done yet. He now has yeah. to get out of the room. That's correct. True. But he's good now, I think. All right. I think he figured it out. Yeah. There we go. Back to that uh, confidence thing we were talking about. I am pretty sure Ness has none now, so it's very possible Just Defend can catch yeah. up. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really interesting how morale can affect you in a blind race, mm-hmm. um, it especially does so if like, much. like especially if you feel like you're up against like maybe a tougher opponent, or like maybe you feel like this is a type of game that you're just not good at. Like, it's amazing what the difference can make between just feeling good and confident, whereas feeling like crap. Yeah. Um, one thing that that helps you to get over it is close irc like entirely <laughs> don't way, look at chat. Just, like, yeah if you're watching <laughs> chat like anticipating the other person's dot done you're just mind being yeah. yourself yeah that destroys oh. me i'm not gonna lie i don't i don't look at it anymore <laughs> i feel like we need to do this kind of uh interview with all of the top finishers you know the top four top eight consistent <laughs> guys just ask them you know what's your what's your, what's secret? your secret yeah because <laughs> I, I, I think you're gonna get a, a variety of answers like that like yeah i close my irc or i just you know i play a lot of games you know i Jorf is somebody that comes to mind as like you know he goes through libraries of games on his stream for fun sometimes you know he's done with his uh attempts for the day of ninja gaiden yeah. or whatever and then he's like okay well uh i'm back to the letter d today let me play all the games that start with d <laughs> and he just plays for five to ten minutes so he's got exposure to a lot of different games and bizarre games mm-hmm. and uh you know it's 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 things like that where i just want to ask like okay you know what's your what's your secret but use pizza another example uh uh he gets you know quake and monkey ball jr <laughs> at the end of last tournament how do you go from playing quake the mindset that you need for that to playing one of the worst platformers of all time i don't know I how he some of home. those games <laughs> he had maybe the weirdest variety of games like a winner has, uh, has ever had in a mystery journey and he just destroyed every game in that top eight it was it was crazy i don't know how he did that yeah right. i need some tips too yeah, let's, let's I mean, get, let's get all the past winners on. People, I mean, for how many people join these mystery tournaments? Uh, you know, yeah, well over a hundred. Uh, the last handful of them, you, you gotta imagine a lot of people would watch something like that. Just interviews with top eight. Like, what is the success story? How do I figure this out? How do I just get better at playing video games? <laughs> they should charge lessons, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I would so take do- those lessons if it guaranteed me to get through a round, you know, <laughs> instead of going 0-2 every year. Yeah, I need to guarantee two wins, then it's a good lesson. Well, Ness is I- figuring this out quickly, I think. He's got the, the hang of the block here. Mm-hmm. I did just want to clarify one mechanic that I didn't realize until now. Um, it looks like those colored blocks, it's not multiple shots, it's a certain color of shot. So, like, yeah. brown is two, oh, okay. you know, green is three, yellow is one. I think yellow is... Uh, yeah, yellow's one, or I guess this green block thing, in Ness's case. It's an interesting new mechanic, this block gun, though. You currently gotta figure out... <laughs> it's hard for me not to just say, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ryza was about to ask the question, he figured it out. Yeah, so. using the block there to prevent uh, the bullets from going through. This is it the must part be impossible watching these mystery turn matches to not want to backseat game in some way. <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially with puzzle games. Oh, yeah. I, I think, like, everyone would agree with this, but it just seems like you're better at puzzle games when you're watching them oh, than playing sure. them. Oh, for sure. Of course. <laughs> of course. I don't know when why, you're playing but them, it's true. Because you're, you're too busy mind gaming yourself when you're yeah, playing puzzle games. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> Now, yeah, do you I'm guys watching. have a personal favorite genre that you like to watch with these mystery tournaments? Is it the puzzle platformers or the puzzle games in general? Do you like more kind of straightforward action platformers, shooters? Well, what kind of gets your blood rushing the most when you're watching these mystery tournament matches? 
in terms of watching, I really do like to see weird oddball games, kind of like we were talking about before. And I don't really, I wish I had more examples, but like, there was like, okay, there was this one game in like, maybe like Mystery Turner 3 or 4 that Mundungu got. It was a ham taro game <laughs> where, you had to, where, you had, where you were this little hamster and you had to run around. The goal was like collect 38 seeds or something. And you had to just run around this schoolyard and, uh, and, and pick up like 38 seeds or whatever the goal was. And it was really, really funny because A, Mundungu is super hilarious in general. But like there were different routes that you basically had to plan to, in terms of getting seeds. You could just run around and collect seeds on the ground. Or you could play these mini games that awarded you seeds. Or I think there were a couple of other th- options too. And so it's these like really weird games I've never heard of that yeah. are really super well, hilarious for me to watch. And on that note, uh, you know, how much of it is submitting an interesting game versus putting a spin on a game we're familiar with, you know, could somebody yeah. submit Ocarina of Time and say, you know, 75 rupees or, you know, like what is, uh, you know, the category, uh, that, uh, uh maybe I should just say, uh, can the category make a game? Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. And people have set interesting limitations as well. Like, uh, one of the, my races was like Mario, uh, what was it, Boney and MT1? It was like Mario MT1, one. Yeah. Yeah, like um, uh, it was Mario Sound, three. Whatever. Mario three beat World one. Uh, I think it was Small Mario only, small only and Pacifism. Stuff like that, and oh, you can okay. like you can have you can have interesting like little uh, gimmicky limitations like, but like press fist or uh, only use a certain gun or whatever stuff yeah. like that. Last tournament we had a uh, Super Mario Kart no right, so you can only turn <laughs> left. You had to steer straight. left. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a really good I, one. I challenge more people to submit stuff like that because those are the great ones. Those submissions are so fun, but we see so few of them. People, one I think, quick... are so focused on trying to submit the really cool games that they forget they can actually just make a, a category yeah. itself interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, just one quick side note: Ness has found out how to zip in this game, but he has. Yeah, to I saw I that. Yeah, yeah. Was like, wiggling what? through a block. <laughs> this sturdy <laughs> cheater over here cheating his way through round one. Eventually, he'll find a use for it, hopefully, so we can see that in action, but he hasn't thus far. <laughs> and, and how often does that happen, do you think, uh, just you know, based on what you've seen from uh, the Mystery Tournament streams that you've done, that somebody, uh, inevitably, speedrunners are curious, and they're going to try things out like this. Yeah. And how Jorf often does, does someone it all find... the time. Yeah. I, I've seen him do it at least five times in different games. I don't know how or why, but it works more often than not. But otherwise, it, it's pretty rare. I just gotta imagine, you know, that that's a good feeling in the in the mystery tournament when you find something you weren't supposed to know. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. It's like, oh, I've got that advantage over my opponent now. Um, and then in terms of, I kind of want to change that. What's your favorite uh, game genre to watch? Question into like, a what's your favorite genre to get? Question. Um, oh, okay. Everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses as well. So, for example, one of the we'll we'll talk about him in a bit, I'm sure. But um, one of the entrants is Raziolim in this tournament, Yo. and he is just somehow ridiculous at um, PC like mouse keyboard uh, shooters. And it doesn't matter if it's like an FPS or like an adventure or not adventure ball, a marble blast ultra type <laughs> or uh, some kind of like third uh, person type game. Uh, but he's just ridiculous at them. And yeah. if you go up against him with one of those games, you just don't have a chance. Just don't even yeah. try. Just, just I don't even let think... him do his thing. And, I think uh... Cap... <laughs> I think, like, okay, so I think Cap and Drake is basically widely considered to be, like, the best player we have in these things now. Uh, now that Blucky doesn't join anymore, at least. But I... I, he wouldn't beat Razzy in shooter games or in like any FPS PC games. I just don't see it happening. And same with uh, same with Primal and NES games. Like there are these people that have these specific genres or consoles or something. Just like an they, expertise. They just, yeah. yeah, they just can't lose. It's just not going to happen. So it's even ridiculous. though you've got your favorites, you know they're 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 prone to losing if you stick the right game on it yeah Yeah. a really interesting dynamic to see that it's you know you're thinking like it's all single player games we're not talking about a multiplayer experience at least between the two racers but there are possible things is just running into hey man he was the best player in the tournament but he just ran into a bad matchup he caught Mm -hmm. 
you know, whoever in this genre that they're Yeah, and it's, it's the kind of thing that you're not going to... The only example I can think of outside of uh, the Mystery Tournament itself that does anything like this would be like the uh, the fighting game... Uh, mystery fighting game yeah. tournaments where yeah. you don't you don't know what you're going to be playing and it's always some obscure like sega genesis you know <laughs> the game that no one ever bought uh, yeah. right. but, is that the one that Uyama would excel in oh yeah for sure i mean masters? In inevitably he'd win the whole thing but yeah we we haven't yet found the uh fighting game genius in any of these tournaments <laughs> oh okay we don't because we don't have any fighting games yeah. there you go <laughs> But I, I'm just thinking it's so unique to the mystery game tournament itself that you have to just kind of have this arsenal of different genres on lock because, you know, you are going to eventually get stuck with uh, the, the the math puzzler or the uh, 3D, you know, uh, on rails. I can't even like put words together to make a genre that doesn't make sense. On rails, film noir, uh, <laughs> crime <laughs> drama. <laughs> I remember one of the finals they played P Cross, so you know. P Cross, you yeah. Play, oh, you can play some interesting that, games. Talk about math puzzler. There you go. <laughs> one of the most uh, controversial genres is actually sports. Sports. Not because, yeah, not because, um, not, not because of anything you think, but just because, uh, like Europeans, like don't know how to play baseball and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't even so think about that. Yeah. Time, a European draws a baseball game. They're just instantly out because they have no there's... idea what's going on. Um, All right, there's the secret. America's got to collude and just yeah. do a bunch of baseball games so Cap Drake can't win. <laughs> and uh, the Europeans just need to submit a cricket game. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Stick the rest yeah. of us. Yeah. That's hilarious, dude. That, that reminds me, a couple of tournaments ago, we actually had a game show of submission, and we decided to just ban those in the oh, future, right. because we were like, what if a European got this and didn't know American trivia? Yeah. Are you are you telling me that when I submitted Wheel of Fortune NES? <laughs> I think that's what it was. I think yeah. it was probably Ness Kamikaze you submitted. There was one tournament where there was like a million game show games, like Jeopardy, Jeopardy Kids. Jeopardy Wheel Junior, the 80 million different variants of that. Wheel of, yeah. yeah, Wheel of Fortune X Jeopardy Kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is like an anime game show now or something. <laughs> I, I bet it owns, though, if it's got the X in it. So. Now, so have you guys banned sports games as well? Are those not a thing as you were getting to? or? I don't know. We allow some sports games. I mean, it just depends. Like, I don't think we'd allow... <laughs> if we just... like the sports. Well, we'll I mean, like, we've if allowed... you don't know how to play basketball, <laughs> then that's terrible. <laughs> like, I don't think we'd allow traditional team sports games like basketball or baseball or anything. But, I mean, we've seen golf on the NES get through. We've seen... Uh... Oh, yeah, golf has been problematic in the past, too, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think, right? I think, like, Ben Gary hated it or something. Oh, yeah. Ben Gary got owned... <laughs> I don't think that was golf. like golf was so literally put the ball in the hole. That's all you have to do. I don't know if it'd be that be that big of a deal. Dude, it's so small. <laughs> <laughs> now do like, we have I don't care if you're good at it. I'm just saying to know what the goal is. <laughs> do we have an idea here? So Ness is uh we think he's on the third stage. Walden for a little bit. Yeah, he's probably towards the end of the third stage. Yeah. And in case people are curious, multiple. Yeah. Mul so at this point, a lot of people have joined the race. Uh, it was we got seven entrants in general, unless I think it's seven entrants, mm -hmm. and um, four of them has, have finished. Okay. So it's lucky that like it's not lucky for Ness that he's up against uh, just defend. Um, the first time, the best time was twenty five oh four. Andy finished that. Um, and now we're at 4601. So we've been running on for some time. It looks like this is probably the boss of Area yeah. 4. We'll see. Yep. I have to say, I really love or the Area bosses 3. in this game. They're this really looks, interesting. Looks like a fun game to play, yeah. 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 I kind of want to go play this right now. <laughs> for anybody uh, who's interested in it, what, like, what is this? Just a freeware game? What is this we've got right yeah. now? It's some random PC game. I don't know. Sick. Um, let's... Well, I guess we'll link it after the race. But yeah. um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, another interesting thing about these tournaments, I don't think we've talked about that yet, is that uh, while I don't have any Ooh. examples for you, unfortunately, um, it's fairly frequent that 
uh, like the tournament gets the game some pu- some pu- publicity, and people start running it um, just because they found out about it from the tournament. Like, get out of my way! Uh, I'm trying to eat you. Yeah, I remember that's that a game. Really good example yep. of that. <laughs> the we most had that on the show example? actually at at one point. Yeah. Oh, I, Ness is done. Yes, All right, there we go. Done. That's the race. GG. So, uh, Ness. congrats, Ness is the the first winner. Of Mystery Tournament 6 uh, in beautiful uh, five frames per second glory as broadcast <laughs> by by my computer. Next, <laughs> next time we ever do something like this, I'm going to upgrade my computer to just be a, a quantum computer or something. Uh, clearly don't have the <laughs> CPU to do that. But uh, thanks for bearing with us on the, the frame rate, guys. And uh, hopefully the point at least gets across to you that, uh, you know, uh, mystery tournaments underway, and hopefully we'll be looking for those streams this weekend. Everybody's required to stream, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. In these uh, races, so there's going to be lots of streams this weekend to be looking out for. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, well, we're going to go a little bit more in depth now. I'm actually going to uh, see if I can swap the the layout here. This might not go correctly, so just bear with me. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we got trying to swap a lot of things here all at once. Uh, and there we go. Hopefully we are back to our, our normal layout here. Yeah, there we go. Right. Uh, hey, welcome back, everybody. Hey. Uh, all right, so we're going to move on now uh, and actually just kind of do a mini, uh, a brief version of our show uh, with a mystery theme in mind here. So we did the, the mystery first round there, but uh, now we're going to actually go ahead and get into some real talk and look at the brackets, break it down for you. It is March Madness after all. Uh, and it wouldn't make sense to, uh, do this show without breaking down, uh, the mystery tournament bracket. So let's get right into it. Uh, so excited. yeah, I know you've been excited about this bony. You've been wanting to, you've been wanting to talk about this here. I love bracketology. Bracketology. It's the, it's the uh, ology of brackets. Uh, well said. yeah, that's, I, I worked hard on that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to kind of go with, uh, you guys can follow along uh, on the stream there. I've got the, the link to the bracket, uh, and I think actually Spike just linked it in chat as well. Uh, but we're just kind of going to go one at a time here, break down these brackets, and uh, give you guys some people to look out for. So uh, starting with, and now that I've got everything all out of order, uh, there we go. We got it up on screen. Uh, we've got the first group there from, uh, looks like A to G. And uh, you see Ness, Kamikaze, and Just Defend are in that set there. So Ness's win puts him into round two there. Uh, and uh, worthy of note, the returning champion from previous bracket used pizza uh, in round two as well. So you guys are giving, uh, is it buys essentially for the top players from top the previous? Four, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we're seeing uh, used pizza in round two already. Uh, and our very own uh, Darkman looks to be in this bracket as well here. Yeah. How are you feeling yeah. about your, your shots there? Uh, I know literally nothing about my round one opponent because I don't even think he's raced on speedruns live before. So, and that seems to be a theme with uh, these yeah. tournaments. <laughs> so it'll be interesting. You know, That's it's a kind real of mystery. it's it's kind of, yeah, it is a real mystery. It's kind of neat going against a total unknown. Like usually, mm-hmm. like I'll definitely admit, like my first round opponent, I always kind of look them up and see what they've done before, but. This is kind of weird. I'm looking we forward to it. We assume that he's doing that for you. He's got all the information he's got on you. <laughs> That's right. Ooh. Analyze with that little like auctioneer's cap or whatever as he's like tallying up your stats. Your <laughs> tallying up all my last place finishes. <laughs> now uh, let's let's just let's just theorize here. You make it through your first round opponent. You've got you used pizza returning champion. Mm. I'm gonna I'm, let me let me remove the bracket from the screen for a minute and give you an opportunity to just. Stare him down. Give him the give him the smack talk. <laughs> <laughs> got any words, dude? All I gotta listen. I beat him once. Oh. It was a blind game. It was Pocket Monster Two. What oh. a wonderful game, I must say. <laughs> so, game of all games. I, I, you know, even if that game wasn't submitted in this mystery tournament, I just gotta find another game like that. You just never know. You never know. You never know. It's there the you go. Remember you did what it we once. talked about? It's the confidence. Did you it once. Uh, Blackie or Boney, do you have any people in this bracket that uh, stand out to you? Yeah, let's see. Uh, certainly you got Ness Kamikaze. We already spoke a bit about Razulim, and his opponent is Kasaspi. Um, and I'm interested, just because I, I met him at AGDQ, so you always kind of want to see how uh, people wind up doing that you've met before. And I'm interested in seeing how he does in this tournament, but he's got a uh, tough first match against Razulim for, for sure. Oh, uh, I think you're in a different section than I'm looking right. at here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. You're getting ahead sorry, of us. In which, which uh, we're oh, looking at A to G. A to G. Gotcha. 
Okay. Uh, ending with the juice uh, right. at the moment. I think the juice, actually, by the way, another runner that could uh, do some damage. Run, the, the runner that could. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of hopes for juice. He hasn't done any blind racing in a long time, but he was pretty good back in the day. I think uh, juice, Ness, hag spam are all people yeah. to look out for. Yeah. And dark man, of course. There you go. No, not me. <laughs> no don't, don't mention. No. <laughs> but yeah, I'd, I'd give use pizza the win of that whole section. All right. There you go. Uh, let's let's move on. We got a bunch of these, so we're gonna try to uh, pick up the pace just a tad here. So uh, H through O, we're looking at this second set here. Uh, I'm seeing Mundungu right away jumps out to me. Uh, I know you mentioned uh, obviously got the Razzlin and uh, Cassis B matchup there. You brought up, but any other names that stand out to you guys here? Honestly, Darbian for sure. Um, he was knocked out last tournament by Nighty really early on. So it's like, so you kind of wonder like how how good of a blinder he might be. But it was Nighty. So uh, and Nighty's one of the best blinders out there. And then Darbian went really far in the losers bracket, and then until he wound up being uh, knocked out by Ness. So he was only knocked out because he faced off against pretty skilled blinders. So I think he's got some. Uh, pretty good potential Derby and also took out a uh, Zex who was our MT2 mm. champ yeah oh there you go that's a good one. now I gotta ask Boney how far are you going <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll accept one win one that win I'll accept one one win <laughs> I'll push for more but I'll take one win you just, okay. so you're well, saying that's... you're going down to caveman are you worried about that potential second round caveman matchup I don't know. If I get a PS1 game, I'm pretty screwed. Oh, I'm no. interested in seeing how actually Boney's first opponent, Zozokin, does as well. He's a he's an old time Twitch streamer who kind of just like back then knew a ton about like a bunch of different games. He's just kind of one of those types of streamers. So I mean, he he is well versed in different uh, older types of games that often come up in this tournament. So he might he mm -hmm. might do pretty well too. One more thought. Mobius is a potential sleeper, so keep an eye out. All right. I may we'll be wrong, be. but just I just love this keep inside info. This, we got this. Yeah, I'm telling you, Boney is the Joe Lenardi of mystery tournaments. <laughs> it really so, is. Uh, let's take a look at this uh, third set here, these P to V. Uh, anybody that you're... Uh, I, I'm so, looking at... I see Primal. That's the yeah, name that I mean, scares Primal, me. The other mystery organizers feel like I overvalue Primal. But Primal I've easily put in the top five um, blind racers ever and possibly even top three. I think he's really good. I don't think that he's done as well in the past couple tournaments as he should be. And I'll over and over say that he's one of the best blinders out I will, there and I think he'll go far. I, I will tell you this about Primal. I, I watched him do a goal of mine and I think I've told this story like four or five times on the show but anyway, uh, he is the the, the minimum amount of time that the goal is supposed to take is like 15 minutes, right? That's it's supposed to be at least 15 minutes, and and it could go over an hour, or, or you know, if it's if it's really uh, on the other end. Uh, I submitted a goal that I think I expected to take about 20 to 30 minutes, and Primal beat it in 12. So he beat it in <laughs> <laughs> under the uh, minimum amount of time that it's supposed to take. So he's he's scary, man. You got to watch out. You never yeah. know. I, I do want to say, actually, I want to point out, honestly. Primal's opponent in the first round is Ramses88. He is a 502 oh, member. He is, really good. he is my sleeper pick. He can actually Ooh. beat Primal. I'm oh. very confident in his ability. You got to wow. watch out. He's got a tough first round opponent. Like, Ramses is really good. Like, if Ramses beats Primal, he can definitely go deep. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, it should be a really good first round match. So building off of that comment and building off of what, you know, the, the, the whole draft and everything, I feel like there's got to be some other people in chat, in chat with me. You like filling out your brackets in March every year. This is making me want to fill out. I kind of, yeah, I'm wondering where, why office. hasn't this happened yet? Yeah, we're, we're doing this after the show, I think. That's <laughs> all right. I am 1,000% down. I'm all so right. Excited. I think that's that'd be funny. a lot of fun. Even Let's though do we're it. a match. Hey, and we're all going to get one right because we know the result. So uh, <laughs> starting off on the right path. All right, let's move on to the next set here. Uh, Last one I just want to throw out there is oh, yeah. Banana Foe, and I'm interested in seeing how he does. Okay. Tetsuya 2, who was fourth last tournament. Yeah. All right. All right, now we're looking at uh, this this bracket with a bunch of good players, and then and then Golden is in this bracket. <laughs> I don't know uh, if you guys know him. He's one of the worst blind racers, uh, mystery tournament players. I, I project he will barely make the tournament this year. <laughs> Uh, last one in. Was last one in and the first one out. Both. I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody, but uh, anybody in this bracket here? Uh, all kidding Besides aside, Captain but you're. Drake, we'll just throw him out there. What? Who? Who is the biggest challenger for Captain Drake in this group? All right. 
I, I may be reaching here, but I think Crank Dead is one of the best blinders wow. out there. Okay. He did very poorly last tournament, and it's not going to happen again. It will not happen again. He's going to kill it. He's so good. All right. Watch I'm, out for Crank Dead. I'm also seeing is Needle in the top. Is that the same Needle that destroyed uh, <laughs> the Mystery Tournament bracket last time around? Yeah, Needle's always made really deep runs too, so he's definitely a force. There are some tough people in this part. Yeah, me too. yeah this part is like Jonathan Spide uh, or however you say his name. He's a pretty <laughs> solid competitor, mm -hmm. so you never know. He could, you know, pull off some upsets. This is would you would you dare say this is the uh, bracket of death or the pool of death right here? <laughs> Maybe it's, yeah. it's Maybe. tough. The pool of death and golden. <laughs> that's right, and me. That's right. You got to balance it out somehow, right? You can't just have every. <laughs> Can't have every star in the same spot. All right, let's look and at another, the next one. Another thing to think about is because there's um, going to be a few more or several uh, PlayStation contributions. Yeah. And not all of those will necessarily be 2D platformers. So we'll probably see a lot of types of games that we don't usually get in these tournaments. So the usual picks might not um, see their kind of stronger genres like 2D platformer type games. But we'll see. All right, mm -hmm. we're 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 uh, a little bit more than halfway done here. Just trying to keep it uh, the pace moving here. So we got another set to look at, and uh, I see full of lizards in the second round there. Obviously, uh, earning his spot, forced to be reckoned with. Anybody else that's uh, standing out to you guys? I'm curious to see how Nudua does. I'm saying, uh, how about that Nudua full of lizards potential <laughs> second round matchup? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, if Nudua gets the right game, that might be a really close one. But think, he could uh, also go like if Nudua gets the wrong game, he could like finish terribly. So <laughs> yeah. it's really hit or miss. Nudua is a wild card for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think Blade Twin Swords has always been a pretty pretty damn solid blinder too, and he's never got very far. So hopefully he'll put up a good showing this time too. I yeah. don't know though. He's up against Pi, so that's going to be a tough one. <laughs> another no, another. Of we yeah. know the Pi. We know Pi, and you know, <laughs> is obviously a big a big name in the speedrun community in general, just and outside the speedrun community even. Uh, how good of a blinder is Pi? I have no comment. <laughs> all right, good. That's all we needed. All right. I, mean, so. <laughs> I will say this: if it came down to uh, like a twelve-hour blind game and somebody had to pull through, my money is on Pi a hundred percent of the time. Everyone. Yeah, I I, he he has the stamina and the persistence yeah. and the dedication mm -hmm. to 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 push through. I, I question uh, in the shorter races if he's somebody to to rely on. Especially, I think, like you mentioned, Blade Twin Swords first round might knock him into the losers bracket. So, uh, I guess we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. Uh, we got, I think, uh, let me check here. Three more? Three more. Oh, wow. We really got a lot of uh, people to go through here. Uh, let me pull this one up. Okay, we're looking at, uh, it looks like I, this is the one with Adam AK uh, at the bottom, and then Lightyear at the top is the next set here. Mm -hmm. Robo Sparkle in there as well. Potential Robo versus Adam and ESA matchup mm, right there. I didn't two. even think Ooh. about that. Good stuff. <laughs> Good stuff, dude. <laughs> Um, yeah. As Boney said, Zex is in here. He was our Mystery Tournament 2 winner. Um, I'm also interested in seeing how Akisto does, just because I know he's a um, pretty talented speedrunner, so I'm curious about that. Uh, otherwise, yeah, Lightyear is always really solid. Palladian's um, a solid pick as well. Mm -hmm. Arius is my other sleeper, so watch out for that guy, too. He's no, really no, good. I now, I gotta ask, obviously your top four seeds got buys, with it being 124 mm -hmm. instead of 128 entrance, but do you guys feel like you try to seed the bracket anyway, or is it just 100% random, just how it falls? Yeah, it's pretty much random, and we've been fortunate to get very lucky thus far, and not mm -hmm. have, like, uh, Lightyear versus Jorf first round right. or something like that. So yeah. you guys, you guys uh, I mean, obviously you've seeded the top four, but outside of that, it's... Pretty much yeah, it's anything goes. You don't try to make sure five through eight are in their own yeah. pods. After and you know, I kind of like that though, to be honest, because a lot of tournaments do that, and I feel like they protect too many people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of fun to have those early round knockouts every now and then. I'm, obviously, you don't want to lose all your best players right away, but uh, you know, make them earn it. I think that's there's yeah. nothing and wrong with that. Especially in in a, in an environment like this, a format like this, we like as much as we want to talk about it and have this fun conversation about who the best players are. Some people are going to jump out by the end of this tournament and be these are the new names of right. the mystery tournament. It's not as exactly as set as like maybe in a sporting right. environment. Well, let's take a look here at uh, this A T to A Z then and uh, see who we've we got. The winner of our race tonight, Andy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Andy took third last tournament, and he is very, very good as well. Yeah. I'm expecting a very deep run from him. I basically 
put Cap and Drake and Andy as the two best blinders in general. Yeah, oh. I agree. Just well, like, tied not, pretty much. If we're not counting you, I still put you at number two at worst. So I think I'm you're, like you're tied with Primal yes. for three and four. <laughs> but those two, I think, stand tall amongst everyone. Yeah. Um, otherwise, in this uh, area, we've got. Um, Bangar is an interesting one to talk about because his strongest games are just kind of really 2D. Like we were talking about, like how uh, you know speedrunners have certain strengths and certain weaknesses. He's ridiculously strong at just really simple, like almost Game Boy style, uh, simple 2D platformers. But um, the, the kind of the more complicated it gets, he can often fare not so well. So because of that, he's traditionally um, not done that well in these tournaments, just because he. Uh, winds up getting one of those more complicated games and gets knocked out. But overall, I mean, he's a really strong blinder, and so it's always interested in watching his, in watching his path. Um, the other name I'll throw out there is Edinal. Edinal is quite good. Yep. Yeah, uh, and we got one more here. I'm just trying to... I've got so many things to scroll through on my... <laughs> this. I've never had this many things in a scene before, but... Uh, Almost there. there. We go. The, uh, the final set there uh, of players in this mystery tournament... Uh, any thoughts here? Obviously, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at this matchup. Is this, we got Jorf in this bracket? Is that what uh -huh. I'm saying? <laughs> yep. Well, we have another Jorf and Nighty match. Jorf Nighty. I feel question. like that happens oh every every year, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> so, uh, oh, nice. They've played three times. Or is it four now? I don't even remember. What is the... Do you remember, Blackie? The rivalry, dude. Do we have a, a match oh score? Do we know? Like, who's... Yeah. <laughs> okay, really so they've played Italian three or four times. One of the two. Jorf has won every match. Every Oof. match. Every Whoa. match. Nice. Nice. He's sleep. got some work cut out. He's gonna, one of the most he's gonna prove himself. One Go of the most interesting first round matchups I'm looking forward to is Lightning fifty five versus Clear Tonic. Mm -hmm. uh, Tonic is a yeah, really Tonic's good blind really player. Good yeah. Yeah, and Lightning yeah. is also a really good blind player, so it should be a really good matchup. Yeah, another uh, potential uh, group of death, I guess, if you want to call it that here. Just uh, some good names that you'll be seeing. Uh, by the time this set here hits round two, round three, it's looking yeah. scary. There's, there's some, that's a deep bracket right there. A lot of RPG uh, representation here in, in this <laughs> as well. We got the uh, the high spirits of the world, the, the clear tonics. Yeah. Dragon Darch is another good one, too. Mm -hmm. um, just yep. one thing about Nighty. Nighty, uh, back to like strong genres. Nighty is one of the strongest puzzle platformer players out there. So uh, if he sees those, you know you're in for a tough one. But he's really strong overall, anyway. So. All right. Well, uh, let's go quickly. Uh, final predictions around the call. Anybody gonna give a name? Who's winning the whole darn thing? Oof. Oof. I want Nighty to finally pull one out, man. <laughs> Nighty, yeah. <laughs> This is his year. Is he the? Is this is like the, the Florida Gulf Coast? Maybe uh, of this tournament here, gonna <laughs> <laughs> ride all the way to the finals or something. Uh, Boney, you got a favorite? Oh, not to be predictable, but I'm gonna give it to Drake. Uh, he actually Drake. qualified for top eight last tournament after winning MT4, but due to some health issues, he couldn't even attend. So mm. he's. Uh, I don't know. He deserves to win this one after the, after dealing with that. Um, I'll throw Primal I, out there too. Primal, okay. You're gonna <laughs> steal other people's guesses here. Like, no, that's that's fine. Darkman, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw up Bangara in there. Uh, I don't know. Like I feel like I don't know. I just feel good about him. I think okay. this is his tournament. Not Spike, you got Ramses. anybody? Yeah, I'm gonna no. throw out my boy Jorf. Uh, you know, Jorf, I've always described as almost the most underrated god gamer out there in this community. Um, I, I think. I think Jorf is a very, very strong gamer from all standpoints. I think he could pick up almost any speed game uh, and do it well. I think he could pick up any game and figure it out very quickly, just adapts very well. Uh, you know, he does have 90, it looks like, in his pod. But uh, as we've said, a uh, bit of a history between them, 3-0. and uh, I, I like Jorf to, to at least go very deep into this tournament. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to take him in a tournament where obviously it's hard to really predict who's going to yeah. come out of this. Uh, I, I will give you probably the number one thing I'm most confident about in looking at this bracket is that Jorf is going to do very, very well. Yeah. 
I think that's a safe pick. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that uh, history repeats itself. <laughs> and one used pizza... Oh baby, it's gonna win back to back. I think he is. He's got he's got a bracket. <laughs> that, yeah, he's got a bracket that I think you know he's gonna hit uh, some challenges later on. But I think early on he's uh, looking good. Sorry, Dark Man. <laughs> uh, he only has please, to worry about Dark please, Man. please prove me wrong. I, I I would love to be wrong. I would love for that, you to. Now how? Right. Now, what, how much gloating are we gonna do next? Yeah, week yeah that's right. Man... When or, or not only when he wins, but when I lose too, because you know I'm gonna lose. There's no there's no debating that. I don't know. Golden, I believe in the first round win. I really do. First round win? That's going to happen this year? All right. right. Rah, rah. Let's go, team. Uh, Okay. Well, with that, uh, that's that's our obviously uh, rehearsed and uh, uh, expert analysis of the bracket. But uh, hopefully you guys are excited about the mystery tournament now uh, after getting a little bit more uh, of a preview. But let's go ahead and uh, get to some other topics here. I I didn't realize we were running so long already, but uh, fortunately we don't have a lot uh in addition to this so uh, let's move on and talk about uh, this clippy clip here uh we have a co-op speedrunning contest going on right now guys this is uh meet chariot this is a co-op speedrunning game here you're looking at i believe this is just one player playing it but uh this is the stage that they, the developers of the game are offering one thousand dollars to the uh team of two players who co-op it the fastest this month uh so going until march 22nd uh, anybody who submits the video, I believe you have to stream the whole thing on Twitch. Uh, but if you have the fastest time at the end of the month or at the end of uh, March, I believe the 22nd, I said, uh, they're yeah. going to give you guys a cool grand just for doing that. And second That's place, insane. I believe $500 as well. What do you guys think about this? this is a neat idea. <laughs> yeah. I- I this wonder is a if- brilliant marketing idea. Yeah. Right, go ahead, Dark Man. Yeah, I was gonna say. I wonder if this is like maybe a future marketing thing where you see it become more permanent. You just try to get into more any which way you can, whether it's speedrunning community, whether it's in you know a different community, or maybe you know you get more involved with the let's players. Like you've seen a lot of people do that already. I just feel like this is like the new, I guess, evolution in marketing, and it's really neat to see. I mean, there's a really big downside which we can get into later, but other than that, I think the concept is really cool. For sure. Yeah, yeah the game it's looks just really good too. <laughs> yeah, a game looks super fun. Uh, you know, relatively simple, but from a speedrunning standpoint, all I'm looking at is man, there's got to be some crazy movement tech that you can have in this game. Brilliant ways to understand, you know, how in sync both the co-op players can be. So it promotes that aspect in addition to just you know, buy our game and have fun. Um, there's actually depth to it. It's not overly straightforward, the movement in it. Um, I think it's a great idea by them to get people to pick up their game. Yeah. It's, you know, a thousand dollars if, you know, they can get literally thousands of people to pick this up. Is right, because nothing to them. keep in mind that a lot of people who are going to be interested by this probably don't own the game. So it's, you know, it's a win-win for them to get more people to play their game and get the exposure for it. But at the same time, uh, you know, if, if you think you're really uh, capable of doing something like this on a, you know, month's notice, why not pick it up for, you know, 10 bucks or however much uh, it's currently going for and maybe come back with a lot of money in return. Oh. Now, now, Blecky, I gotta ask: Is this something that <laughs> I'll bother interests about you? It. I, didn't, I didn't know about it until now. <laughs> until oh, okay. right now, okay. So, I don't know if Cipher is still in the area, but or do in you in the speed running thousand dollars. <laughs> How does a grand sound? Yes. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, Sounds good. No, I, I really am interested in this competition for sure. So you might see me. Now, now here's here's the extra, uh, you know, meaty uh, piece of news about this game. As far as I know, this only has local co-op. I don't believe it has online co-op. So, in that regard, now you guys are, you know, even more favored to to do well in this. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, 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 I don't want to pull Cipher back in, you know, after he's, you know, finally managed to escape the uh, <laughs> the speed running Chris realm. You just come, you make your return tour, you hit, you'll split a thousand bucks with me, and then you can bounce into retirement. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe you'll, like, 
maybe you'll see me enter with like whatever cipher is backwards in case he like doesn't want people to know that. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you join. But yeah, this this competition is is really cool, and I really want to <laughs> enter it. There you go. Well, you have until March twenty second, so uh, plenty of time for you and any of the viewers who are. Uh, looking to make some bank. No, I think it's a really cool idea, though, just in general. And, yeah. and it's, uh... and I, you know, I, I'd like to think that the GDQs have become so big that they actually are inspiring an idea like this, that speedrunning is something that people understand more and that they know it is a way to play your game. So, yeah, you want to find some quirky way to promote your little 2D platformer, uh, your little indie game? Uh, this is a great way to do it. So I think it's a brilliant marketing idea, and I hope we see more of this sort of stuff in the future. Sure. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and move on from that. We've got uh, just a few more things here. We've got our record of the week. And uh, Spike, you're pretty excited about this category here. What's what's going on? Oh, yeah. What is going on here? Let me see. Our game was Super Metroid. Uh, this is... Oh, okay. Um, so I don't think I actually know about this. What is this? I'm sorry. I don't remember this at all. <laughs> Low percent ice. I'll help you out. Low percent ice. There okay, you go. Now, now, worthy of note here, uh, you know, we've had Super Metroid on the show a time or two, but this is low percent ice we're talking about, and we're talking about a 52 minute and 44 second run. That... I, I like to keep in touch with the community. I like to know when people beat my any percent time. This beats my any percent time. Low percent ice. Uh, <laughs> that's... I, I that's I, I'm kind of sad. I don't know what to say. It's uh, it's it's pretty impressive though, nonetheless. Uh, just to take a category like this where uh, you're limiting yourself so much and uh, still just kind of advancing the tech uh, in the game. Here you see in the uh, Fantoon fight. And, uh, it's just more of that advancement we've seen, we've come to expect from the Super Metroid community over the last, you know, handful of years. Back, you know, we still remember when sub 50 any percent was a big deal. Yeah. Now all of a sudden they're, you know, not that far away from the 50 minute mark and low percent ice. Um, absolutely terrifying category to watch. Um, absolutely unbelievable to see this achieved. And, and who was the runner for this again? And we got two cat here, and the replay there is uh, on the bottom of the stream so be sure to click that link while it's or click that link yeah you can click links on streams that's how it works uh, type yeah, that links. link into your browser and go check out the replay because it is pretty damn impressive uh i think the thing to note about this run when you're watching like you mentioned uh there's just so many high stress moments as a viewer i can't imagine as the player uh you know your energy is constantly low uh, it, you're gonna see in just a minute here uh, the dragon fight uh he makes it look simple but uh in the mother brain fight that you're gonna see just the pixels that he's away from losing the run just you know if he gets hit at all he doesn't have the energy for it and uh he just he cuts it close so many times and it's it's heart attack city just watching it but uh very impressive nonetheless it's definitely one of those dynamic sort of runs, kind of like with any high difficulty category you might run into where you almost need a specific kind of race of runner for the game. It's not just going fast. That's only one of the skills that challenges. You also need an unbelievable types of nerve uh, at times to get through some of these fights where again, you are dealing on constant. If I make a mistake, this run is over. Um, yeah. And there's a certain amount of that in all speed runs, but knowing that it's not just time loss, it's literally the run dies, uh, is really exciting to watch, I think, for someone. So, uh, re again, really cool to see the category coming down this far. Definite recommend for anybody looking for a speed run to watch this weekend. Yeah, and it's just, here, this is this part just freaks me out. I don't like to watch this. I just oh, can't. dude, Mother Brain. He's, yeah. he, he's underneath Mother Brain doing jumps to dodge the bombs. It just looks like he's gonna jump into the head. Like I, I'm picturing how long you're holding the button down here. And now let's uh, just clarify once again: you need to shoot Mother Brain 200 times. I think it is. It, I'm not gonna even guess on that. To, you know, I think I you might be right. I believe it's 200. If, you, if you've got it, you've got it. Is it 200? That yeah. is. And you can get hit like twice. So good ratio. Yeah. <laughs> Those jumps are freaking me out. It, and and he's taking damage on purpose too to get down to that uh, just over 300 and. Man. He's literally taking that on purpose. And, yeah, and just, just like. Just to save the actual right. frame. It like, never take. mind the fact that I've got to dodge everything, you know. I don't know. I'm just. I'm I'm impressed. That's uh, really interesting. And it's, it's good to see, uh, you know, the. 
I don't want to say the the fringe categories, but it is in a sense, you know, it's not the category that everybody plays, but uh, at the same time, it's still getting that same level of uh, attention to detail. I mean, that's what happens. Like some games just get all the wealth. Let's face it. You yeah. know, you've got thousands upon thousands of games out there that could be great speed games that we don't touch, and yet we look over at Super Metro and they're like, "Man, we've just grinded the sucker into the ground." Yep. We're like on our fourth category, trying to optimize it at this point. Right. It's just like, can some of the other games have making, a little bit of this well? Right, making up more categories just to have more things to optimize, <laughs> I guess. But no, it's, it's it's a staple category, and it's cool to see that it is pushed that low. So uh, very interesting. Now we're going to switch gears from uh, the record, of course, and uh, let's, let's head in the opposite direction here. Let's take a look at what happens when <laughs> things don't go your way. It's time for Glitch Please. This is an old one, but it was submitted to us by our good friend Joka. And uh, <laughs> I had never seen this one before this week. How did right. this one not get in? Before? This is just a classic. I wish you would have shared it sooner, but uh, you see him grab the ladder there. But uh, no, wait, that wasn't the ladder. That's uh, <laughs> nice. that is that's air. That's that's not a ladder. That is air. I, I love the, the, the second of hesitation, too. He's just like, it looks like it's like a cartoon, right? Like the cartoon character grabs <laughs> and he realizes that it's not the ladder. And he kind of does like the blink. <laughs> <laughs> and down into the pit he goes. Uh, it's the realization effect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To note, take. I think he was ahead in this run going into that. Oh, mistake. yeah. It's always glory. You never, because you never see these things on just like, oh, well, I, I was two minutes behind anyways. Yeah. No, it's always on. All right, PB dead. Yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> always kind of ruin a run. But thanks again for that submission. And uh, just a reminder to everybody watching, you know, uh, most of the clips that we use on our show are given to us by the viewers. So uh, if you want to see something on the show, if you saw something hilarious happen or you did something hilarious on your stream, please send us those clips. You can actually use our new uh, fancy the final split dot com website to submit those clips. So if you haven't been over there yet, check out the final split dot com. Uh, we got the forum there as well as uh, all our old episodes and everything. So uh, got, yeah, head on over there, uh, check us out. And uh, with that, let's get some Q and a with the chat here before we wrap up. We've had quite the uh, lengthy episode here. So uh, let's go ahead and try to bring it to a close here. Anybody got any fun weekend plans aside from uh, obviously the mystery tournament races? Ooh, I feel like I'm going to honestly be watching a lot of mystery tournament yeah. matches this weekend. Yeah, first weekend's always the, I'd say, the most fun. Yeah, it's everybody's around and, and they have to be. So And so if it's the entrance, a lot of it's just seeing all the goofy, quirky, obscure Bony games Blackie. that are going to pop Bony up. Bony, Blecky, or Blecky, how did that happen? <laughs> how did that happen? You know what I did? I, did a, I, nice. I bet I did a find, replace, and it just... I don't even know. I don't. I don't know how that happened. That's <laughs> There's always one mistake somewhere in the in the stream. There's that's the one. Bony uh, Blecky or just Blecky? No, no individual <laughs> questions can be directed to Bony. It's Sam. they got to go through Blecky. <laughs> now, if they if they direct the question to Bony Blecky, then you guys have to answer in tandem. The, this yeah. this fun, is not right? an answer. This is right. not a question for Bony. That's right. We just like alternate words. That's, yeah, that's right. One word at a time. Okay. It's this a co-op answer. Isn't, right. that a, isn't that a who's, who's that line? That seems like a who's line who's game. Like, yeah. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, it actually is. Dude, let's like a who's, who's line game out of this. All right. Well, uh, let's 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 ask the question then. What's your favorite game, Bony Blecky? <laughs> uh, Arkanoid. <laughs> Well, Blinky? now you ruined the subtitle. You ruined the whole point. Oh, the, no. See, the whole point no, of the game. Whole we're point of the done. Okay. Arkanoid, Arkanoid is a one word game. No. It. Again. Ar okay, there we go. Much better. Arkanoid do it again. There we go. All right. You, you scared me for a minute there because I thought you were just trying to get out with a one word answer. Uh -oh. But uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Pretty good question here from uh, uh, Inert Materials. Uh, what's the best way to find these races to watch? Is there, if I'm just the guy who wants to sit down and binge on these for the weekend, what's the best way to check them out? Yeah, it's pre you'd pretty much just join the Mystery Channel on uh, Speedruns Live. And then you would uh, just watch for, basically, whenever two opponents are ready to do a game, uh, they'll say, give game in the channel. So you just basically, you can set that as a Nick Flash, or you can just watch for it very intently. And uh, then once uh, the race gets started, It'll be streamed on Speedruns Live Race Race uh, channel. So let me um once more. Let me just kind of post that in terms of this is how you'd uh, join Speedruns Live in general. Just our little guide there. And if you want to just kind of either just stand by in the uh, chat room to see to watch for races or just kind of 
look watch the uh, races page in general to see what races pop up. Both of those would work out. All right. Uh, we got a question here from Genosaurus. It's a good one. Blecky, which non-cypher speed gamers would you want to co-op speed game with? <laughs> Ooh. Are we limited to New York? Oh no! I guess not. No, dream. Give me the dream team. Yeah. <laughs> I think. I was say when's Mystery Turn a co- co-op edition? Yeah. <laughs> I would have to say PJ. It's hard not to say PJ. PJ? That would be an absolute blast. And he tra- keeps it a or he treats it very seriously. So I think that would be an absolute blast. All right. Uh, we've got uh, a question for Boney and Blecky or Boney Blecky going to SGDQ. Probably I'm not. not. Probably not. Oh, okay. If right. only. All Maybe right. Next I'm an, I'm an <laughs> Here on the final split, guy. we bring you the That's most right. disappointing. Everyone is not going. That's, uh, <laughs> That's sick. Uh, Andy Lancaster wants to know if the tournaments are held yearly or more frequently than that. Twice it's a year. Typically, yeah, typically yeah. twice a year. I'd say July to September registration for MT7 will open up, so keep an eye out. Okay. Um, if you have Twitter, follow SRL Mystery. SRL mystery, follow that. SRL mystery, that's yeah. the that's the one. Uh, let's see, uh, we got a question here about asking uh, for some sort of mini mystery tournament at SGDQ. Well, <laughs> without it's Boney been and Bucky, before sort has it? Of. Well, just the 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 time cop or future cop LAPD thing, Majigger. It wasn't a mystery tournament, but there was you know there was it had some of that sort of. Mm-hmm. Like this pizzazz to it, sure. But yeah, we never had just a straight up mystery tournament. At one of these, I, I, I would like to see the same sort of thing. No, okay, okay. We got a, a follow up question here. Uh, I, I noticed, and I'm not the only one that noticed this. Uh, we got incroyable BB here. <laughs> When's Spike going to actually participate in the mystery tournament? Now, now, I'm not going to ask you to answer that question. I just want to hear, and I don't care if it's the real excuse or not. I just want to hear a bizarre excuse. You know, like, what's? Uh, I want to play because. <laughs> um, I don't want people to find out that I'm, and I've maybe already revealed this, uh, just as, uh, infamously bad at blind games as I thought you were going to say, I, ate your pie. I thought you were going to say I'm the best. I'm <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm too good. That's what I thought I, he was going to say. You know, yeah. I want people to live in this delusion, uh, that, you know, the used pizzas, the Jorfs, the, <laughs> the best players in the world. That's right. And, uh, you know, I don't want to break any hearts out there. That's I right. Realize, you know. I yeah. like that. That's good. That's good. So, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we in there. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, the dark man, go ahead and, and and break the news to me here. Which final split host is going to do the most damage in this tournament? It's golden. Dude. <laughs> uh, now I don't know if you know this, but I don't take your your flattery. Okay, it doesn't mean anything to me. That's uh. I- if you're if you're if, if you want this box, all you got to do is ask. I'll move. I'll take the green box. You can have. <laughs> you, know, you don't have to earn Winners it. Winners should get the top left box. There you That's go. Awesome. Ooh, are we right. playing? Ooh, is I like this, that. Is, there should it's be some bet. four square. There, okay, right? okay, okay, I like that. Okay. This is the last longer, all right? Whoever lasts longer is the one that gets the yellow box. Okay, that's right. Whoever, that's there. We go. You can you, you play me for the box. Let's do it. Right. I, I accept. All right. All right. And I look forward to being in the green box next week. So, there we go. Uh, all right. Well, on that note, I think we're uh, just about all done here. And uh, I think uh, one of you has a speech for us, and the other might be getting us a raid target. But we'll go to the speech next. Yeah. And uh, Darkman, are you going two weeks in a row on this? I am. Wow, you really are pushing for that gold box. Just... That's right. He's doing he's doing the work. All right, so, what's going I, on here? This 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 fits the flavor of the the stream pretty well. So you know, of course, many of you who watch us regularly, you know, we've talked about the best of NES race, and that happened right. last week. It was a fantastic race, by the way. They had I think thirty eight entrants or something like that. And uh, the, 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 you know, of course, they had a lot of heavy hitters and whatnot. And there were a few people that, you know, were blind in a few games. Well, there was one competitor that was blind in almost all of the games. <laughs> so he just raced to see how long he can go. Well, this guy was literally up for about 34 hours straight playing these games. 34. Blind. 34 hours straight. And in addition to however many hours he was up beforehand. And this is, of course, his name is uh, Zergriff. Okay. So it, it was just fantastic watching him play through these games, almost all of them blind for over 34 hours. He eventually stopped at, I believe, Mario Brothers 1, which was like, I think, the third to last game. It was just Mario mm-hmm. 1, Mario 2, and Mario 3 left. 
He spent 10 hours in Tetris NES. He spent 5 hours in Kabuki Quantum Fighter. Oh. He just... Nothing seemed to, like, make him stop. Like, he seemed to, like, really be having a good time. So I just want to give going. a shout-out to him. Yeah, because it was really enjoyable. It was great to see, like, the community really supporting him and whatnot. Like, he got a bunch of raids during it, and he got, like, a bunch of tweets and whatnot. So it was it was really fun to for me, personally, to watch it. And he seemed to really be having a good time. So it, it, was... it never fails to amaze me when these kind of races happen, when there is a player who doesn't have the experience. You know, they're they're, they're genuinely going into it uh with no knowledge of the games and and no expectations really uh but just having a good time and pushing through it and then the community always seems to rally too i mean Mm -hmm. you go back to uh you know go way back when ocarina of time uh, bingo races were streamed and you had you know every single streamer in the race got a little bit of showtime and then you hit like hour four and suddenly somebody's got their own little four hour monologue uh, as they try to wrap up their card or something, and and people always rally behind that too. So it's 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 a uh, it's a perpetual thing. It's really cool to see. So yep. very good. Congrats uh, on uh, you know almost almost making it through all twenty. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. If you haven't played any of Game them. Close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Game we have this warped perception because we're so used to watching in the speeder and to me people who know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. So then you take someone and you say, hey. They haven't played any of these. It's NES hard, and there are 20 of them. Yep. The fact that he even got past, you know, as many as he did is insane. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, on that note, uh, that is going to do it for us. Uh, do we have a raid target in mind here? Uh, yes. All right. Got one while, right you're, while you're working that up, I'm just going to remind everybody that we're going to return to our original time uh, next Thursday. So we're going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern instead of uh, the later show that we did tonight for the mystery tournament. So come back uh, 8 p.m. Eastern next Thursday for another show. Episode yes. 40, guys. Uh, Bony Blucky, you want to give any final shout outs here? Uh, well, I just actually wanted to. I was about to suggest Lack Attack. Um, nice. He's oh, nice. He's been one of my favorite streams to watch. Uh, he's just like he's the type of person that gets an insane record and then keeps going anyway. Just yeah, and especially <laughs> with um, Darkwing, the heated competition with Darkwing Duck. I mean, both of those guys really want this Zelda One record, and Zelda One is honestly one of my favorite games at this point to watch speedruns of because there's so much adaptation. Yeah. So shout outs to Lack Attack. Shout outs to Mystery Tournament. <laughs> yeah, no lie. The rivalry between Darkwing and Lag Attack has maybe been my favorite speed rivalry of all time. Just nice. the, the back and forth of it, we don't see that a lot in speedrunning, but it's been really exciting to watch them go back and forth on this. Zelda 1's a great speed game to watch, and yeah, he's he's going. He's going, dude. He's all going right. Nuts. Uh, one more final thing before before we uh, sign off to uh, Final Fantasy Relay, I believe, is this weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So uh, tune into that. That's going to be on Puexel's channel, I think. Is that correct? I think that's no, really it's on cool. it's on Limit Break's channel. Limit now, Break. Oh, RPG Limit yeah. Break. Okay, I just wanted to make Ooh, sure we get right. that in there. So uh, 3 p.m. EST Saturday, Speedruns Live Mystery Tournament, Twitch.tv slash Speedruns Live. We're going to stream more matches. There Watch. we go. Should right. be fun. Hopefully, that uh, in there. no, that's good. Uh, you <laughs> caught me right before we uh, uh, exciting we're about time. to sign off. Really so lots it. of streams yeah. this weekend, guys. Hopefully we'll see you on uh, at least one of them. But uh, just remember that your run is not over until you hit everybody all together. The final split. The the final final split. split. The final okay, that was split. not not synchronized uh, at all. We'll work on it. It's okay. It's all right. We're done. We're out of here. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye.